if your um, stretch marks are terrible, they're completely red and they're fresh, start supplementing with some collagen, pull the plug on your growth season, avoid alcohol or things that cause oxidative stress and give yourself some time because they will fade over time, slowly but steadily. Vigorous Steve here, let's talk about stretch marks. A badge of honor for some, especially those in the bodybuilding community, stretch marks equals gains. But for others, it's the sole root cause of all of their insecurities, making them think they're completely unbangable. Well, I'm here to offer a couple preventative solutions, teach you exactly how stretch marks occur in the first place, especially in relation to certain performance enhancing drugs, and offer a couple quick fixes if you want to get rid of your stretch marks in a hurry, albeit that those quick fixes are probably going to be expensive. If you can wait, if you're patient, I have good news for you. Stretch marks eventually, with a couple years, close to a decade, will fade. I'm covered in stretch marks. I have them on my shoulders, in between my legs, on my lats. But the longer you have them, the more they will fade, almost to the point the stretch marks look identical to your regular good old skin. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm and consider subscribing. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either YouTube or Patreon memberships where you can vote for upcoming deep times or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, private for an entire hour before you go public and it turns into a super chat, super flood. It's actually quite gruesome. Stretch marks are basically damage to the elastin and collagen structures, which make up the skin, the adipose tissue, the subcutaneous space where everything attaches to the rest of the body. Elastin forms the elastic fibers of the skin and collagen provides strength and flexibility to the skin. And when both of these structures are stretched beyond their limits, they separate. So the adipose tissue and part of the subcutaneous tissue separates. And this is how everything on the skin, here on the stretch marks on both sides, concaves inwards. Now all you're left between the rest of your body and the dermis epidermis is a hole. Right, this is where stretch marks start to get really visible. They turn red. Again, they fade over time as the collagen structures and the elastin kind of fills back up. But the full structure of the adipose tissue in the subcutaneous space will never recover unless you do some sort of surgery, which we'll get into a little bit later. This can also occur if you're in a high inflammatory state. And again, you're not providing adequate building blocks to the elastin and collagen structures which make up the skin, the adipose tissue, and the subcutaneous space. So if you're growing a lot and you're not supplementing collagen accordingly, right, what do you expect is going to happen? You're in the mid of puberty, you have these hormonal fluctuations, not paying attention to your nutrition, spending hours and hours and hours in the gym. You're growing and growing and growing and the skin and the adipose tissue and the subcutaneous space starts to separate. So this is very common occurrence with people who undergo weight gain, uh, whether that's a rapid growth during puberty, right, in height, or rapid growth of the fat tissue when people um, eat a little bit too much. And again, you really have to abuse yourself before you get stretch marks from foods, because in a lot of cases, the adipose tissue actually undergoes hyperplasia. So whatever separation might occur in that area is being filled up with new fat cells. And you will still see a lot of stretch marks in the form of cellulitis, on um, fat people, morbidly obese people. But when it happens with bodybuilders, the sole root cause is muscle gain. So it's not the end of the world. It's actually proof that you're growing quite rapidly, but you can still circumvent and prevent it by taking the appropriate steps on your nutrition and your supplementation. In certain cases of being in a high inflammatory state from particular underground labs, right? Using uh, synthetic carrier oils, causing a lot of inflammation or using recreational drugs, causing a lot of inflammation or celiac disease, or another inflammatory issue that's currently undiagnosed. If you're in a high inflammatory state, stretch marks can be worsened. And if you use corticosteroids topically, this can exacerbate stretch marks as well. So if you have some sort of rash or some sort of infection, and use a corticosteroids topically, and the skin is already stretching because you're a little bit more muscular, keep in mind that corticosteroids actually inhibit protein synthesis. They're quite catabolic they're the opposite of anabolic androgenic steroids after all and when you apply them topically you're literally instructing your body to inhibit collagen synthesis and elastin synthesis and thus the entire thing slowly falls apart if there's a little bit of a stretch behind it because you're more muscular everything will separate so keep this in mind don't use them on places where stretch marks are more likely to occur so if you apply them here or here or in the armpits or in between your legs 
um, you know that you're going to get stretch marks from them if you use them for longer periods of time. Now, all performance enhancing drugs and glucocorticoids aside, hormonal imbalance during puberty can also cause stretch marks besides the fact that you're growing in height or width or overall body weight. Hormones like testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone all contribute to collagen synthesis and elastin synthesis in the correct ratio. So if you're using performance enhancing drugs after finishing puberty, please, right, don't be a dummy, finish your puberty first and get a couple of years of experience. Watch those first cycle videos. I lay it all out there. If you go on PEDs and you don't manage your hormones correctly with hormone replacement therapy, not just testosterone replacement therapy or haphazard steroid cycles where you don't manage your estrogen and progesterone levels, right? testosterone, estrogen and range, DHA and pregnenolone for neural steroids and progesterone levels, when your HPTA is shut down, in this instance, all of your hormones are at the top or slightly over the reference range with the exclusion of testosterone going super duper super physiological, right, for bodybuilding aspirations. In these correct ratios, you still have adequate collagen and elastin synthesis. So it's very unlikely if you supplement with collagen and just eat healthy in general, that you develop stretch marks. Again, if you're going to, you know, do a haphazard steroid cycle with boatloads of gear, grams of steroids, um, IUs of growth hormone, insulin, and perhaps uh, IGF-1 or other peptides, you're going to grow so rapidly that it doesn't matter how much of a hormonal balance that you're in or how much collagen you supplement, you're still going to develop stretch marks. So growing slowly over time, allowing your body to fill in the gaps by providing more collagen and more elastin in this adipose tissue, the skin and the subcutaneous space that's now slowly being stretched by this increased muscle mass that you're acquiring. If you do it slowly, stretch marks will not occur. Again, I got all of my stretch marks when I went from zero, being a regular recreational swimmer, uh, swimming maybe a couple times a week for uh, leisure and competitive purposes in high school. I went to the gym one day a week and then two times and six times a week training the Arnold split. That's a lot of extra stress and gross potential that you have when you're in the middle of puberty. So I should have supplemented with collagen at that time, which I didn't know about. So let's bring it over there. Supplement with collagen. It makes up the majority of the protein content of your body after all. So please start supplementing with some collagen, type one, two, and three. You can get a collagen from hydrolyzed bovine heights, which provides collagen type one and three. That's very good for a skin. A collagen type two comes from uh, I believe it's chicken feet and also hydrolyzed, so you don't have to worry about that. A combination supplement of collagen type 1, 2, and 3 provides all of the building blocks for your hair, your nails, your skin, the adipose tissue, perhaps in combination with some dietary fat, the subcutaneous space, skeletal muscle, bone structure to a certain extent, and all of the organs which are present in your body. Collagen is the goat of supplements besides maybe creatine monohydrate. So, Go with an over-the-counter supplement that contains type 1, 2, and 3, so you can have all the building blocks present. And I know I completely understand. Here we go again. I'm sure you guys are going wild in the comment section right now. But Steve, if I just have all of the amino acids, which are required for collagen type 1, 2, and 3, and elastin and keratin, um, I, my, my body should be able to synthesize all of the collagen correctly. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you need to provide it in the correct ratio at the same time. So all of the amino acids which contribute to collagen synthesis or elastin synthesis or keratin synthesis are present at the same time for the synthesis of collagen or anything else to take place acutely and properly. Now, there's a couple of cofactors which regulate collagen synthesis, vitamin C, copper, zinc, vitamin A, that's both beta carotene and retinol, vitamin E, B vitamins, right? Particularly niacin and riboflavin. So I'm basically just telling you to eat healthy. It's not that difficult. I haven't had a stretch mark after I started paying extra special attention to my nutrition. And I made sure I was also in a micronutrient surplus every single day of the week for decades in duration with collagen supplements on top. <sighs> and I'm also in a low inflammatory state, albeit that some of the comments make me highly inflamed. Now, that aside, right, if you follow a you know, general healthy diets containing a lot of micronutrients, especially the ones that I mentioned on the screen in these particular dosage ranges, um, you shouldn't get stretch marks. And if you want to stimulate collagen synthesis further, besides oxandrolone or some of the other performance enhancing drugs, don't worry, we'll get to that. 
supplement with a little bit of glycine and perhaps proline with every single meal. Similar to supplementing with leucine and isoleucine, which starts protein synthesis, you can supplement with a proline and glycine to start collagen synthesis. Again, it's not rocket science. All you have to do is do a little bit of research, look into the medical literature, and you'll see that it will work. Of course, you can supplement Anavar and other PDs on top to take that to the next level. But this is just a very easy way to um, mitigate the potential of developing stretch marks when you're training for size. If you drink alcohol, you're kind of defeating the entire purpose because alcohol inhibits protein synthesis. It dries out the skin, especially if you do it frequently. And it also inhibits several steps of the neurosteroid cascade, the balance between DHA sulfate and DHEA, for example, right? So avoid alcohol predominantly, especially if you're in a growth season or undergoing a growth spurt during puberty, for example, avoid alcohol at all costs. And while you're at it, also avoid anything that potentiates oxidative stress. Oxidative stress on the skin can damage the connective tissue of the collagen structures and the elastin structures, causing them to separate. Again, when you're growing, there still needs to be a little bit of internal pressure for them to separate. So if you're under a lot of oxidative stress, besides the DNA damage, you can also damage the elastin and the collagen structures of your skin. Smoking, drinking, DNP, right? <laughs> Being on a very heavy steroid cycle and not taking in adequate amounts of anti antioxidants because training on cycle potentiates a lot of oxidative stress. This is why some of the people that uh, train insane and taking a boatload of steroids look like smokers, even though they don't smoke at all so anything you can do to avoid oxidative stress frequently please do so also and this might be a little bit controversial especially for bodybuilders i would recommend you to avoid masterone and winsterol if you currently have stretch marks that are getting worse because at least in in vitro studies masterone inhibits estrogen mediated collagen synthesis or estrogen mediated gene transcription and Winstrol inhibits progesterone receptors, again, in vitro. So if you use either or in combination, one of the reasons why Masterone and Winstrol are so good for thinning the skin, part of that reason is by inhibiting the effects of estrogen and progesterone. But if you're growing and growing and growing, and you're not taking care of your micronutrients and collagen intake, Masterone and Winstrol, through inhibiting the effects of estrogen and progesterone, might exacerbate the stretch marks which are taking place. So if you currently experience stretch marks and you are master on a winstrol, either or in combination, and you're not paying attention to your nutrition and supplementing with collagen, take those out, right? Because otherwise they're going to get worse. How many bodybuilders during contest prep develop more and more and more stretch marks? We don't really care because when you step on stage, you can cover all of this up, mask any of it, with protan or well dream tan which is what they use over here in asia it's just part of the process part of the game stretch marks equals gains but if you're not a bodybuilder and you don't chase size at all cost and you're a little bit self-conscious about these stretch marks which are slowly getting worse and are completely red in the beginning just take the masterone or the winstrol or both out because i think that they're making it worse, right? Start supplementing with a little bit of collagen. Start looking into your micronutrient intake, like I mentioned earlier, and stick with performance enhancing drugs, which provides the uh, correct balance of sex hormones and neurosteroids, that being cookie cutter TRT containing testosterone, DHEA, and pregnenolone, maybe HCG and growth hormone on top. And then you go with the compound, which are medically prescribed in cases of burn victims, like oxandrolone, for example or in cases of muscle wasting diseases or overall sarcopenia. Prima Bolin, for example. If you have stretch marks and you want to get rid of them, there's a couple of things you can look into. One of them being the topical formulas, the creams that most pregnant women use. Those really work well for the uh, separation of the abdominal area. Again, their progesterone levels are going quite high during pregnancy and thus they get that little darkened line over their abs. A lot of these women use particular creams to combat the stretch marks. Some of them are better than other. Personally, I haven't used them. I would just go with the brands which have a good review on Amazon. I'll link a couple ones down below. And if that doesn't work, your stretch marks are absolutely terrible and you can't get your body fat levels down for the adipose tissue to kind of shrink to match this indentation of the stretch mark that you have, besides the fact that it slowly fades over time. 
if you can't get your body fat levels down to match the separation, then you'll have to do surgery. There's microneedling, there's laser therapy, there are chemical peels, all set to stimulate collagen synthesis at the site of administration. But I would rather have you discuss that with your cosmetic surgeon because all of the anecdotal reports that I was able to find online that are positive um, are all from people that are not really fit or into the fitness industry, paying attention to their nutrition. Um, so yeah, take that with a grain of salt. I would rather look into preventative measures than corrective measures downstream. And again, if your uh, stretch marks are terrible, they're completely red and they're fresh, start supplementing with some collagen. Make sure you take performance enhancing drugs which stimulate collagen synthesis. Pull the plug on your growth season. Avoid alcohol or things that cause oxidative stress. And give yourself some time because they will fade over time, slowly but steadily. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve, Vigor's crew. You guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Stretch marks galore, but I don't give a shit because I'm already married, already off the market. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.